What an absolute beautiful episode. I feel like this was the episode that really should have started Kenobi off, maybe even as early as episode two or definitely episode three. I think waiting this long for these flashbacks was just a little bit too dragged out, but I'm happy that we got it. I think we have a ton to talk about over the next seven days until we get the season finale of Kenobi. So let's get to this breakdown and then I will make a lot of videos covering a lot of different things that I know a lot of people have questions about, including myself. So we start this episode off on Coruscant where Anakin and Obi-Wan are training together. Now the timeline here is before episode two, Attack of the Clones. And the reason I say this is because Anakin still has his right arm. And well, at the end of Attack of the Clones, Dooku actually took his right arm. So we know that this is definitely before any of that happened. So Vader is greeted by Reva aboard the Star Destroyer as she informs him of Kenobi arriving on Jibim. He awards her the rank of Grand Inquisitor which is what she always wanted. Now, of course, we know that she wanted this title for no other reason than to get closer to Vader and to follow him around on more dangerous missions for more opportunities to kill him. And why she hates Kenobi? Well, I'll explain it further later on, but essentially she hates him for failing Anakin and causing Anakin to turn to the dark side and destroy her life. As Obi-Wan Kenobi lands on Jabim with the crew, they come across many refugees that Obi-Wan offers to help. Vader is hot on Kenobi's tracks, of course finding him because of the tracker that Reva put into Lola, which is Leia's droid. Vader says it's not them they need to break. Now what I think he means by this is that they need to worry about breaking Kenobi, for if Kenobi is broken, being their leader, the rest will also be broken. Lola can be seen with red lights now instead of blue, destroying the wiring as it closes the hall doors, locking them in as Vader approaches. Now I really loved how Kenobi tells them that Vader is coming and it seems like he knows a lot about Vader and they're like, well, why had he know this? Explaining that he won't stop for pleasantries or to be patient and when they ask how he knows, we get a flashback of Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting again. Now the whole episode has this beautiful theme of moments between Anakin and Obi-Wan's fight in Attack of the Clones or just before it. And if Anakin has the upper hand in one scene, it flashes then to present day with Obi-Wan and it shows how he feels in that moment and then vice versa. If Obi-Wan has the upper hand, it shows Vader and how he feels and mimicking Anakin's feelings in that time, showing that this is still very much Anakin Skywalker. This is not the powerful Vader that we know in A New Hope, Empire or Return of the Jedi. This is still very much a child-minded Anakin. He's impulsive, he's brash, he's not the totally collected Vader that we see later on in life. And we get that later explained with Kenobi's lessons, which I think was done absolutely beautifully in this episode. It almost feels like someone completely different wrote this episode, and actually that's true. This episode was written by Andrew Stanton, not Joby Harold. Now, with Anakin and Obi-Wan's fighting continued in this second scene, we see the amazing lessons that he gives Anakin, showing that these were the very lessons that could have saved Anakin's life in their duel on Mustafar had he actually listened to them. Obi-Wan tells Anakin that he grows too aggressive. A Jedi's goal is to defend life, not take it. Really showing some of the red flags with Anakin, and it does this perfectly. It portrays Anakin as the aggressor, which falls perfectly in line with his style of fighting. Form 5, Dem So. The offensive form. Whereas Obi-Wan's is Sarisu, Form 3, the defensive form. Anakin says mercy doesn't defeat the enemy, which is 100% Anakin's frame of mind. That mercy is for the weak. We do not train to be merciful here. Man confronts you, he... Oh, oh, wrong show. Anakin would make John Kreese and Terry Silver very proud. Vader observes Jabim and launches the attack as Kenobi prepares everyone for the Empire. As the Empire lands, they set up the turrets to blast the doors and Leia goes to fix the wiring. How she knows tech stuff? Well, very easy. Same as Anakin building C-3PO by the age of nine. She's a Skywalker. They're basically like human gods, but not without flaws, of course. And they make mistakes. Reva lands and the Empire fires upon the doors. They set up and they get ready. Obi-Wan gets a hollow message from Bail Organa who shows his concern for him and Leia. He is also worried that Vader found him, Obi-Wan, and knows of the children, Anakin's children that is. He says he's going to go to Tatooine to help Owen with Luke Skywalker. Now of course this is a big mistake, Obi-Wan should be deleting these messages, but hey we see that later on helps with the plot. We learn that Tala couldn't be a part of the Empire anymore. 
We develop her story and learn of her past, which was quite interesting. She was part of the Inquisitors terminating 14 families with Force sensitives, obviously an officer for the Empire, and she witnessed it. So now she betrays the Empire and saves Force sensitives with the help of Quinlan Voss, as we learned in Episode 3. Now, when Obi-Wan does look at the wall with all of the Orbish writings and the writings of the different Jedi that have been there and all the different lightsabers that we see, I will be making another video going into deep detail about that. And if anyone can decipher those words, please, by all means, you'll be saving me some time. So as things start to get heated, Roken comes out with a Wookiee bowcaster, which is a very powerful weapon that Wookiees use. And we see Chewie using it in the original trilogy, as well as Revenge of the Sith. Reva and Obi-Wan speak through the blast doors at Kenobi's request, and Kenobi tells her that Vader would never let his true identity be revealed. He realizes that the only way Reva can know that Vader is Anakin is if she was a youngling at the Jedi Temple during Order 66. The wheels start to turn in Obi-Wan's mind, and he's realizing who she really is. He tells her that Anakin killed younglings, and she tells him that the younglings thought Anakin was there during Order 66 to help them, and that she hid with the bodies of her youngling friends in order to survive. Kenobi realizes she isn't serving Vader, but rather hunting him to get closer to him. That's why she's doing all of this. The rank of Grand Inquisitor grants the GI to be closer to Vader on dangerous missions, meaning more chances for Reva to fight or blindside Vader. Her anger with Kenobi is revealed as well when we learn she hates him for failing Anakin and causing Anakin to execute Order 66 on the Jedi and her friends and herself. She blames Obi-Wan for what happened to the galaxy and for essentially being a bad mentor and not saving them. She's been playing the Empire this whole time in order to get closer to Vader and Obi-Wan tries to recruit Reva to help him defeat Vader. Which is true, I mean, he can't defeat Vader at this point in time, he's not trained properly anymore. If this were Revenge of the Sith Kenobi, I'd still say he'd lose against this version of Vader. So anyways, she slices through the door and breaks it open as he sends her flying backwards with the Force, and all hell breaks loose as the Empire fires upon the refugees and they fire back. Kenobi ignites his blue lightsaber and goes full prequels mode as he deflects blasters against the stormtroopers and protects everyone else. Kenobi is definitely back, maybe not fully, but he's not far off. The loader droid that I thought was Wrecker takes shots and sacrifices himself to protect Tala as she detonates a thermal detonator and buys Kenobi some time. Obi-Wan realizes that he's beaten, and we get another beautiful flashback of Anakin getting the upper hand on Obi-Wan. Now, this is an important scene. We see Anakin striking down on Obi-Wan, who is cornered and defending himself down on one knee. Does this look familiar to you guys? This is the same angle mimicked from Luke attacking Vader in the same way in Return of the Jedi. The only difference here is that Anakin keeps attacking, whereas Luke eventually stops. And I think this shows quite the difference between father and son, and of course the moment. I also want to note that the choreography just before Anakin bests Obi-Wan is very similar, if not identical, to their duel on Mustafar as they go through the tight walls into the control room. Kenobi gives his weapon to Haja and surrenders to the Empire, saying there are other ways to fight. He knows that Vader wants him, and it's essentially just easier for him to give himself up. But of course he has a bigger plan, and that is to recruit Reva. So he plays his mind games with Reva as he has brought before her. He tells her that Vader will do it again to the children and families in there that she's going to let this all happen. As Vader will be focused on Kenobi, Reva just needs to take the opportunity to take Vader out. Kenobi is trying to turn her to his side for the greater good. Now, Kenobi is sent back through the doors, and while I thought this was kind of weird, I think Reva is actually working with Kenobi now at this point. She wants Kenobi to get away, and she wants him to get the people to safety. The flashback shows Anakin using his iconic behind-the-back move as he moves as swiftly as he did. Hats off to Hayden and Ewan. Hayden doesn't miss a beat after 17 years and continues to be a great swordsman with Ewan McGregor. He disarms Obi-Wan and learns a powerful lesson foreshadowing his loss on Mustafar. Your need for victory blinds you, Anakin, which is absolutely correct. Anakin was far too focused on the future, far too focused on the outcome, on winning to see the bigger picture. He was almost too narrow-minded when he fought, especially if his emotions were involved, which quite often, well, it's Anakin, they were. As they ready to leave, Vader breaks through the doors and sees the ship taking off as he controls it with the Force, 
This scene was the most badass scene that I've seen with Disney Star Wars. This was straight out of Force Unleashed where Starkiller was controlling the Star Destroyer. It echoed a lot of that scene, and it seems like they're taking quite a bit of inspiration from the Force Unleashed in the last two episodes. As Vader drops the ship down, he tears it apart with the powers of the dark side, only to see the emergency shuttle escape and blast off into space. Too fast for Vader to grab a hold of it. He's standing there looking like a chump, and we get another flashback, concluding the Obi-Wan and Anakin fight, this time with Kenobi taking Anakin's lightsaber with the Force and telling him that he is a great warrior, but his need to prove himself is his undoing. Until then, a Padawan you will still be, as it shows Anakin's immense disappointment in himself. All he wanted to be was a master, and at this point he was still a Padawan. Then of course in Revenge of the Sith he became a knight, but of course he wanted that master rank. As we get a shot from Anakin to Vader showing exactly how he feels in this moment, they are doing a beautiful job of portraying the past to the present with how Anakin felt and how Vader feels now in the same exact emotion. And I think if Vader and Kenobi never fight again, this would be the perfect connection into A New Hope when Obi-Wan and Vader meet again on the Death Star. And Vader tells Obi-Wan, when I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. But of course we know they're gonna fight again, so that's gonna definitely have to lead into Vader losing. Reva shows up from behind him and tries to ignite her lightsaber to kill him. He sensed it, of course, and freezes her with the Force, just like Fallen Order when he fought the second sister and Cal Kestis. He toys with her, completely making her look like a joke, as he doesn't even bother to use his lightsaber. He just uses the Force until he takes hers and splits it into two, throwing the other half to her feet. Besting her in lightsaber combat without even putting any effort into it, as he drops her to her knees, he summons both sabers, and for a moment, I thought that he was going to end her like how Anakin Skywalker did to Dooku in Revenge of the Sith on the Invisible Hand ship. However, he didn't do that. He stood over her and plunged the saber into her, just as Anakin plunged it into her as a youngling. Now, look, I watched this scene over and over and over again to confirm that he did indeed stab young Reva. We see her as a youngling make a face of pain as Anakin plunges it only to be connected to Vader finishing the movement. So it's like they're kind of showing the moment of Anakin in Order 66, making one thrusting motion only to have Vader retract the saber or follow through with it and then retract it. And we see both young Reva and present day Reva making the same sort of in pain face as they both fall over dizzy and in pain dying. So in my opinion, I think Anakin definitely did stab her. I just don't think the way that this was shot and directed that they wanted to show that Reva was watching from afar or got away somehow. I think she was stabbed the same way she was stabbed here, which to be honest is, I don't really see that making any sense. I don't see how she could have survived that as a youngling, considering the lightsaber hole would probably be much bigger because she was a smaller person. But hey, the GI comes in and kind of explains some things, so maybe we can make some sense of that in a second. Vader tells her that he knew all along that she was the youngling, and it proves that he was just using her, and this is why he was so easy on her for so many missions. He was just playing her. As the real Grand Inquisitor walks in, he tells her that revenge does wonders for the will to live, meaning his own will to live, and mainly her own as a kid to survive. He explains her rage was useful, meaning her anger towards Anakin and Obi-Wan was helpful to them, and they merely used her to get them closer to their enemies, knowing all along that she was going to betray them. The Grand Inquisitor and Vader walk away as they leave her in the gutter, while Kenobi learns that the hyperdrive is down, so this of course means that they can't move fast and that the Empire will track them and catch up to them, meaning Vader will get to Kenobi in Episode 6, the season finale. He senses a disturbance in the Force, much like how Yoda sensed Order 66, as Reva finds the comm link from Kenobi that was dropped by Raja. As she sees the hollow message of Bail Organa telling Obi-Wan about Anakin finding out about the children, and that he's going to go to Tatooine to help Owen with Luke. So Reva already met Owen in the town, if you remember in Episode 1, and she knows now who he is. She will find Luke as we end the episode over Luke sleeping in his bed. For me, this episode was a massive win. Of course, there were a few things that I thought were kind of weird, but it was just completely wild 
washed away by how amazing the episode actually was. It portrayed so many great emotions and scenes of Obi-Wan and Anakin in the prequels and matched it perfectly to Obi-Wan and Vader now. It humanized Vader, it made Obi-Wan kind of break out of his weak shell and brought him back to who he was. Could the de-aging have been better? Yes. Were there a few things that were kind of inconsistent or weird with the other episodes? Absolutely. But overall, I really enjoyed this one. I thought it did a bang on job of portraying the characters and evolving the characters like how we know them to be and taking them to the next level from where they were at the beginning of this story. W's in the chat right now want comments all over the board. It portrayed Vader exactly how he felt he was portrayed in the games and the comics. And it showed the beautiful training with Anakin and Obi-Wan that tied into how each of them felt later on in the present day, kind of going back and forth. It was magnificent. I really enjoyed this episode. I'm going to make tons of videos regarding a lot of your guys' questions. So flood the comments right now. Let me know what videos you want me to make, what theories we can talk about. I love being this excited for Star Wars. It is so much more enjoyable, so much more fun, and really brings out the kid in me. Leave a like on this breakdown if you enjoyed it. Until the next episode on Star Wars Theory, remember, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, the Force will be with you always.